resuming we say that we have to take two perturbations. So, that equality constraint remains satisfied and now we express delta sigma b ok all the errors epsilon epsilon a they go to 0 anyway delta sigma b can now be written as minus delta j delta y that is various derivative at a plus epsilon a um, divided by this one delta j by delta y various derivative at b plus epsilon b times delta sigma a that is what we get from here to here right. Now, what we do is uh, consider the change in first order change in our functional because the same two perturbations. We have taken a function y and perturbed at two points a and b then this one will also be there this will be uh, if I looked at it you know uh, here what we have we have to make a small change when you have k this is uh, actually k here and not j right. So, let me change that this is yeah. So, that is delta uh, k ok let me take the same thing delta k delta k delta k and delta k ok not j because we are doing in k. Now, uh, we will try to do this in j that will only change will become this is delta j by delta y at a plus epsilon a into delta sigma a the same perturbation that we had area plus this will be delta j by delta y b plus epsilon b into delta sigma b that is the change that is not equal to 0 what we need to say well when we take this in terms of only a single perturbation sigma delta sigma b we have now written in terms of delta sigma a. So, we can write this this is a first order change in the functional objective functional because of the change in the function actually two changes two perturbations. So, we will have delta j delta y at a plus epsilon a into delta sigma a. Now, instead of delta sigma b we will substitute what we have here. So, that will give us this thing delta j by delta y at b epsilon b and this will be the minus ok. I will just put it as minus 1 to account, uh, account for that times delta k by delta y at a plus epsilon a divided by delta k by delta y at b plus epsilon b this whole thing times delta sigma a. Now, if we look at this this is delta sigma delta sigma a the perturbation there is only one that we can make other perturbation is dependent on the first perturbation to make the constraint satisfied the k equal to 0 or delta k equal to 0 first order thing. Now, if you collect all of these uh, this one is going to be we will say that all of these epsilons right we have epsilon a in several places they all go to 0 if a perturbation is really small rather this delta sigma a tends to 0 also right when you have that we can leave out all these things. Now, what will be left with will be delta j by delta y at a uh, plus we want to call this portion including the negative sign. So, there is a negative sign which came because of this here right including that we want to call that as some lambda ok. So, I will write that lambda ok. What will be left out after I make epsilon a tends to 0 is delta k by delta y at a ok all of this multiplied by delta sigma a. This we argue should be 0 this is the first order change and that should be 0 
if y that we are considering is actually a minimizing function ok. That is what we got. So, we got an equation now uh, let us uh, circle it yeah this whole thing because delta sigma is arbitrary this whole thing should be equal to 0 right. Let us remember that. Now, let us also try to write what we have here we define something to be lambda ok. Now, again these epsilon epsilon b I will not write because they tend to 0 what we have here is delta j delta y that is a variational derivative at b ok divided by delta k by delta y at b with a minus sign that is equal to lambda. So, what does that give us when we write it delta j delta y at b plus because lambda uh, this is a minus sign let us say we take the minus sign the other side and uh, we have delta k multiplying that that will be lambda times delta k by delta y at b equal to 0. So, we got another equation here we had one equation another equation if you look at it they are the same only thing is this is evaluated at a this is evaluated at b. Let us remember that the two points we chose for perturbations they are arbitrary we could have chosen this a and b if you go back and look at it this a and b we could have chosen wherever we want that means that the two equations that we have here this is equation 1 and equation 2 are to be valid at every point in the domain from x 1 to x 2. So, that gives us a necessary condition now which is to say the variational derivative of the objective functional ok plus some lambda times variational derivative of the functional type of constraint equal to 0 this should be true for all x belonging to the interval x 1 to x 2 everywhere this should be true and that is the necessary condition for a global constraint problem. Now, this thing like we had done the finite variable optimization problem this is called the Lagrange multiplier ok. This multiplier is a scalar variable scalar variable ok. So, we have to find that how do we find it because this is a differential equation because this I Lagrange equation will be an expression this will be an expression this is some constant that we do not know as yet this is essentially the whole thing that we have here is a differential equation right this is a differential equation ok and there will be boundary conditions also that we can write for it. But in order to solve for this Lagrange multiplier equation fortunately we have it what is the equation to solve for that we have this x 1 2 x 2 g that is k equal to g y y prime d x equal to 0. This is a scalar equation this is a scalar equation because if you remember if you recall a function is a scalar its value because function is a mapping from function space to a real number space it is real value scalar. So, this is a scalar equation. So, we can solve for a scalar unknown which is lambda ok. So, when this is the what we have here is the uh, necessary condition we can also write uh, the Lagrangian here just like we had done finite variable optimization you have the j plus lambda k we can write Lagrangian then if you take variation of this Lagrangian with respect to this function y equate to 0 what you get is essentially this differential equation ok. And we have the constraint which is this which we can solve. So, we can write now the necessary conditions for the problem where we have minimize j which is from x 1 to 
x 2 with an integrand f y and y prime d x where y is the unknown subject to or constraint k equal to x 1 to x 2 where integrand is g which depends on y and y prime d x. Let us denote let us make it a habit to indicate the corresponding Lagrange multiplier right there okay, with a colon there to indicate Lagrange multiplier. Then we can write the Lagrangian for this problem as j plus lambda k. Then we take the variation of the Lagrangian or write uh, Euler-Lagrange equation for the Lagrangian directly meaning if I were to write what I would do is dou L by dou y minus dou L by dou y prime prime equal to 0 because we are taking up to the uh, first derivative. If there are more derivatives you keep on adding as we have already discussed. So, the concept of writing the Lagrangian comes out as we have derived today by taking two perturbations and making sure that the constraint remains active to do two perturbations. Then you got a condition that uh, looked like this of course, Lagrangian included means that what we had was uh, uh, delta j by delta y plus lambda times delta k by delta y. These two things being what we get when you write the Euler-Lagrange equation. So, this will be uh, this part will be dou j by dou y minus dou j by dou y prime prime equal to 0. Likewise, this portion is going to be dou uh, k by dou y minus dou k by dou y prime prime uh, well not equal to 0 right, so it is just the expression yeah. So, that is what we have and what we have here when you take variation that is what it means when you take Lagrangian this L has j plus lambda k that is what we will have uh, lambda k lambda k coming from this and total this is what we get okay. This is how we do when you have a constraint. Let us take a, a simple problem um, from uh, mechanics okay, or, or geometry or mechanics which is the famous problem again if I have two points and there is gravity this time I am not going to talk about brackish Stefan problem there are two points and there is gravity we take a problem of a, a, a chain or a rope which has some mass okay. when, I, when I hang it between two points like this let us say it is fixed over there and fixed over here okay. There, is, there are two points given point 1 coordinates are given point 2 coordinates are given. What shape does the chain take under the effect of gravity? This is a constrained minimization problem because we know principle of minimum potential energy. So, this chain let us say that the chain has uh, mass per unit length mass per unit length equal to let us say rho some kilogram per uh, meter right. This is some kg per meter I have this rho that is given to us and the chain has a length also length of the chain length of the chain or a rope heavy rope let us say this is length is L okay. and let us say the separation between these two is some let us say h okay horizontal separation is h vertical separation will be there you know 1 and 2 points coordinates are given to us how do we pose the problem because the chain all these little points on the chain every one of them wants to minimize its uh, potential energy as a consequence everything wants to go down as much as they can right so uh, but then they cannot all go because it is held fixed at the two points because they are all this is inextensible chain we have to consider chain usually when you take you cannot 
pull it, you can add uh, uh, apply tension and then try to elongate it because you are consider inextensible rope here, then what shape does it take? If you pose the problem using minimum potential energy, so I will write minimum potential energy. Uh, let us indicate with P e itself potential energy under the gravity, we take some reference where we measure this. Let us say I take this reference right here, I put a coordinate system, this is my x and uh, this is my y. The shape of that chain is my function y of x, right, taking from reference coordinate system that we have taken. Now, potential energy wherever the beam, you know, from here we measure this how much ever this will have some y value here at certain uh, x and as I extend it there will be some y there, y there and so forth at different values of x where x goes from. Uh, so, potential energy we can write from uh, because I have take coordinate system here 0 to horizontal separation h 0 to h. If I take a little piece of uh, the chain here okay with the dx there or let us call this ds the little piece over there okay let us say that is ds what is its mass it is going to be rho ds how much has it come down at that point it has come down by uh, y and uh, because there is gravity we also should put rho g because that is the force gravitational force rho g y d s will be the uh, potential energy due to that little element d s that we have shown there. And this d s we have to oh, integrate over the entire thing right now it is not uh, let us say 0 to h we have to do it over the entire length of the uh, chain that is given to us that is 0 to l because l is the length of the chain we have to go along from here all the way there by taking uh, small pieces of d s everywhere. Okay. That is the uh, objective function that we have. This we can rewrite okay, because our x is not there yet, but I can write because the d s that we have we can write it as d x square plus d y square under root that is basically Pythagoras theorem. right? I said this is d x let, let me write it here little d x that the d s that is d x and d y. Okay. So, if I enlarge it this is d s d x and d y this is d s this is d x and this is d y. How do you get d s Pythagoras gives us this I can rewrite this as if I take d x outside. Okay dx square if I take outside becomes dx and when I do that this will become 1 when I want to take outside I have to divide by dx here that becomes dy by dx square or in our notation this will be 1 plus y prime square dx. Okay. So, I can write this as now ds is turned into dx so I can say 0 to h because that is our limit for x as we have taken that will become rho g y into square root of 1 plus y prime square d x because that is what we have for d s over here. right? Now, this is subject to a constraint. right? If there is no constraint you will make this y as negative as possible to minimize the potential energy that is all the chain links are not attached to one another if all of them want to uh, minimize potential energy together they will all fall down to minus infinity. But we are not allowing it because links are connected there is a constraint on the length of the chain. Length of the chain how do you take this will be integral d s right. So, we have this little length you take and you do it from 0 to l again for d s we have this. So, I can write this constraint as the length of the chain 0 to h square root of 1 plus y prime square d x again remember that this is nothing but d s. Okay. So, this one 
minus length of the chain that is given to us should be equal to 0. Now, if you look at this problem, this is an example of a calculus of variation problem where there is a functional type constraint. Okay. We had that already in the problem statement of a bar optimization, but we first wanted to understand how to do these things. If I have a problem like this, then I can write for this one, I can write the Lagrangian. right? So, let us remember our objective function which is in this form and the constraint which is in this form. I can write the Lagrangian for this. So, Lagrangian is the objective function 0 to h okay, which is rho g y into square root of 1 plus y prime square d x plus we have to put a Lagrange multiply z we have to make it a habit to put that functional type constraint uppercase Greek letter a scalar uh, unknown lambda times the constraint which is 0 to h square root of 1 plus y prime square d x minus length of the chain. Okay. This is our unconstrained problem now because we wrote a Lagrangian for this we write Euler Lagrange equation for the Lagrangian itself. Right? That means that I have to do do L by do y minus do L by do y prime prime equal to 0. This will be the necessary condition for the constraint problem where there is uh, a functional type constraint. In this case the functional is an integral or a Lagrange equation with the Lagrangian. Okay. So, we can do this now. So, we have uh, dou L by dou y, we have y here and nowhere else. So, we can write it as uh, rho g to square root of 1 plus y prime square that is dou L by dou y. Okay. So, let me encircle this in black. So, you can relate to the black color. Now, let us write this part in blue color okay, minus we have to write dou L by dou y prime it is over here and it is also over here more terms will come in. So, if you do this so y is now kept as it is because you are doing partial derivative with respect to y prime. So, this will have rho g y derivative of this this will take it downstairs 1 plus y prime square there is a half that comes and then y prime square derivative will be 2 let me write it half because this is you know square root half will come and now this will become 2 y prime okay, and this 2 2 gets cancelled that is for this portion. We will also have plus lambda times this part right there is a y prime there that will be again 2 will get cancelled this will be 1 plus y prime square and then y prime 2 y prime 2 2 gets cancelled we get this. This whole thing we have to take derivative like this one okay. that is equal to 0. This will be the differential equation for the chain. So, you have to simplify it you now you have 1 plus y prime square it goes, uh, but then there is a prime right we have to do this. Basically, we have a differential equation with which we can solve for the chain shape. In fact, when you solve this uh, you still do not know this lambda. right? How do you find the lambda? For that we have the constraint. So, this and our constraint which says that from 0 to h 1 plus y prime square with a square root d x minus l equal to 0 or that is equal to l. So, this differential equation and uh, this constraint have to be solved to find our solution y star x and our solution value of lambda star. If you find that you would have solved the problem and that happens to be what is known as a catenary. It is a famous geometry or mechanics problem it is both geometry and mechanics problem 
uh, is called a catenary. A chain takes the shape of a catenary. In fact, many bridges that are built, suspension bridges, will also take this uh, bridge, if, uh, take this shape called catenary. Okay. So, what we have done now is we have taken a problem where we are minimizing potential energy subject to a functional type constraint. There is a integrand uh, for this, integrand for this, both are defining two functionals and we have solved the problem. So, uh, by using this concept of Lagrangian. So, just before we finish, let us say what we have done today. We have done a general problem where you have minimized, there is a functional which will have x1 to x2, an integrand that depends on a function. In fact, it can be any number of derivatives, even though uh, whatever we have discussed, we did not say it. Uh, but variation derivatives applicable to any number of derivatives. Okay, we have a function like this subject to a constraint which also can depend on any number of derivatives. So, integrand here can be y, y prime, y double prime and uh, y uh, nth derivative d x if we have something like this. So, here we should not forget to put this lambda which is the Lagrange multiplier. We write the Lagrangian. So, Lagrangian if you say again is L is j plus lambda k and write I Lagrange equation for the Lagrangian directly and the boundary conditions if you write all of them we get the answer. Answer here is arriving at the differential equation and the constraint like we have for the catenary problem that is the differential equation and this is the constraint to solve for this lambda. Okay. Now, we know how to deal with a functional type, type constraint. In the next lecture, we will deal with a differential equation type constraint. Once we do these two, we can solve any problem in calculus of variations, then you can do any problem in mechanics or structural design, optimal structural design. Thank you.